Let's um, just let's just go back to August 2019. Okay, the unlawful proroguing of Parliament, um, yeah. judged by the President of the Court to be unlawful, void, and of no effect. A few days later, in September, 21 senior Tories who exercised their their role as parliamentarians by voting to delay the Brexit that has subsequently turned out to be disastrous were all purged. Dominic Cummings was quoted as saying, when are you effing MPs going to realise we are leaving on the 31st of October? We are going to purge you. Later that month, it turned out that Jennifer Arcuri had been awarded cash and access to Boris Johnson while he was the Mayor of London. The Independent Office for Police Conduct said officials were influenced by the close relationship between the pair while Johnson still denies misconduct. March 2020, most experts believe 20,000 deaths could have been avoided if he hadn't delayed the decision to introduce the first lockdown. We've heard the phrases like let the bodies pile high and sundry other criticisms from the aforementioned Dominic Cummings. He skipped the first five Cobra meetings and boasted about shaking hands with medical staff on a COVID ward. Uh, Quick intermission here for the Brandon Lewis fans among you. He got all the big calls right. Um, Let's fast forward to May when Dominic Cummings was busted breaking lockdown rules and lied to us all about testing his eyesight. Then you had the COVID contracts worth millions of pounds going to individuals and companies with links to the Conservative Party. Even the High Court ruled later that the VIP lane for awarding those PPE contracts was illegal. But he got all the big calls right. 16th of June, you remember Marcus Rafshard and the U-turn on school meal vouchers that he brought about after Johnson's government had refused to provide 15 quid's worth of food vouchers to some of England's poorest families. Test and Trace in the summer of 2020 turned out to be a 12 billion pound failure um, that had only had a quote marginal impact. Mate, we're not even in August of 2020, uh, Phil. I, I hesitate to draw. I think that is uh, an impressive list of... Uh, <laughs> I've uh, not uh, even uh, started. Uh, I had to stop uh, to uh, breathe. Uh, I had okay. to stop to inhale, Phil. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, it, 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 is, it is wrong. I mean, if you... Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, almost, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a record of... of uh, so why can't but, people but, cut the cord? Do you know it, anyone? Do you know anyone with an uncuttable cord? Uh, well, yes, I do, really. And, and, it's, uh, the, the, and the, the cord, fortunately, doesn't go um, via Boris Johnson mm. to their political affiliation. They... They see him as just a passing. Uh, a uh, well, a passing then, 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 yeah. Well, we've spoken to people like that. You know, people who will probably never vote anything but conservative, or, or, or maybe have a little brief hiatus from it while he remains in post. But, but whose ideologies and, and commitments are still clear? Um, shall I carry on? I've got, shall I carry on? I've got more. 17th of August, 2020, it was the exams you turn. You remember that? Gavin Williamson. Sir Gavin Williamson, if you please. Um, he introduced a computer modelling system for assessing exam results and then promptly abandoned it. That was shortly before. He reopened schools one morning and closed them again that very afternoon. Um, at September of 2020, Brandon Lewis, bless him, stood up and announced that Britain was prepared to break international law in a very specific and limited way. This is a consequence of the Brexit deal negotiated by David Now. Wait, for it. Lord Frost being absolutely unfit for purpose and so rubbish that they had to try to disown it while the ink upon it signed by Boris Johnson and Ursula von der Leyen was still wet. It was November 2020 that the let the bodies pile high comment was alleged by Dominic Cummings to have been made by Boris Johnson while resisting a second lockdown with the words no more effing lockdown. But of course he got all the big calls right. November of that year just a a few days later another U-turn on child food poverty after weeks of resisting calls to extend free school meals into the school holidays. They rolled over on that. Uh, Twelve days after that, Johnson's ethics advisor quit, Sir Alex Allen, after the Prime Minister refused to sack Priti Patel, despite a formal investigation finding evidence that she had bullied civil servants. When you defend a liar, you become a liar. So his own ethics advisor had to resign. July of this year, that's quite a little bit of time off there, from November 2020 to July of 2021. I could fill it with a little bit from memory, but I'll stick with the list I've got in front of me. The manifesto-busting foreign aid cut. So the pledge to keep foreign aid at 0.7% of national income was scrapped, despite opposition from senior government backbenchers. August of 2021, the pet rescue. Two foreign office whistleblowers alleged that Boris Johnson ordered the prioritisation of an animal charity during the evacuation of Kabul. Boris Johnson continues to deny that he had anything to do with the decision, just as he denies that he had anything untoward with Jennifer Arcuri, just as he denies that he broke any laws or that any parties were thrown at Downing Street. December. No, September. Pension triple lock abandoned. The government ditched that manifesto promise. Uh, the next day, the hike in national insurance was uh, announced to raise £12 billion to fund the NHS and social care. Then you had the uh, Owen Paterson Protection 
Society. You remember that when they wanted to rip up the whole rule book of parliamentary standards in order to get Owen Paterson off the hook? off the hook after he'd been found to have acted corruptly. Um, that plan was reversed 24 hours later. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, the mastermind of it, for want of a better word, uh, obviously has moved on to bit bigger and better things, trying to lecture the Archbishop of Canterbury on Christian doctrine. And then the party gate fine, um, 12th of April 2022. The first sitting Prime Minister to be criminally sanctioned when he was given a £50 fixed penalty notice by the Met Police for breaking his own Covid laws by attending his own birthday party in his own office at number 10 Downing Street. Why would you want to defend a law-breaking liar and how on earth would you go about it? And breathe.